Davenport West High School, and then I got a job. I'm right now at Davenport Central. They want you to use. So oh, they, I almost didn't bring it up. What name? Um, they have a very, very specific kind of lesson plan format. Or up at the top, you fill in certain things. You have to fill in what your standards are, your objectives. And then they have this thing where it's like, I do, we do, you do. So I do, the teacher does, we do, together, you do, your students, you do your thing. Um, so that's like what Davenport has everyone do. When I was at West, they like required you to fill one out at least once a month and to submit it electronically. Now that I'm at Central, um, they just want you to have one like on your desk every day. So when I was figuring out what I wanted to do, I was like, well, I'm going to follow this lesson plan format that they gave me, and I want to build in some kind of reflection. Because if you go to Augie, you know that reflection is a big thing. Um, so you can create, construct, reflect, right? Get that right? Reflect is the big R. So reflecting is important, right? So I wanted to like build that in, because it wasn't into the regular lesson plan format. Um, so what I did is I made a template based on what the Davenport district does. Um, you can see this is my lovely binder right here. Um, basically what I did was I took it and I just wrote in a couple of my own things and then I made a bajillion copies. So like, for example, I have this question here, is there anything you can include that's an everyday activity for you? Um, every day in my classes we do SSR, sustained silent reading. We do reading for like 20 minutes and they fill out a log. Then after that, we do a journal. Um, I present it, I read it out loud, they write, then we talk. That takes up like a good 45 minutes and we're on the block schedule. So that's good for me every day. It's like a large chunk of our lessons. Pretty much every day we do those things. So I wrote that into my lesson plan. I just like hand wrote it in and then I made a bajillion copies. So every day when I go out to fill out my lesson plan, that stuff's already on there. I don't have to write in every single day Students will read independently and fill out a reading log that's already on there. Um, same thing with the little reflection portion. I wrote that on there. Daily reflection at the end. Um, a big thing for me, this might not work for you, I like to handwrite my lesson plans. Some of you are like, ugh, no, I only do electronic. Okay, that's fine. For me, it works. I handwrite them because it's extremely easy for me and I don't have to waste a bunch of time every single day printing off my lesson plans. I already have the blank pages printed out. Um, what I do is I print out a bajillion and I stick them in this little magnet thing. This is my desk. So it's magneted to the side of my desk. Every day, I grab one out of there and I fill it out and it takes me like five minutes because the independent reading's already on there, the journal's already on there, my name's already on there. I just fill it out with whatever else we're doing. Super easy to do and it's really accessible. It's right on my desk, magneted. I magnet everything because I have like two metal desks and a metal bookshelf and a metal cabinet and then another metal bookshelf. So I magnet everything. Um, then finally, the way that I found was easiest to post it was to magnet it um, to the front of my desk. So like, lesson plans are on the side over here and I just put one, two, three, magnet it right to the front there. Um, it's super easy. If an administrator comes in, they're like, where are your lesson plans? I'm like, look at the front of my desk and they're right there. <laughs> they can see them, they don't get mad at me. It's wonderful. Um, finally, what I do is I post a daily agenda. Um, this is a picture of my board. It's kind of looking a little sloppy because it kind of has a lot of stuff going on. Um, but basically, I post an agenda, which is not required of me. But it is required that I post common core standards and a daily objective. I don't know if any of you have any experience with that. Um, but more and more schools are really getting heavy handed with the common core standards. And then now my school is with the daily objective. Every single day, we're supposed to have it up somewhere. Um, and I've seen teachers do it other ways that I don't really like very well. They kind of like, as an afterthought, write it up on their board. When I was student teaching, that's what I did. I was like, oh, damn, objective. And I like wrote a common core standard and I wrote it up really quick. It was just a pain in the butt. I was like, no. Um, this way that I have set up is much more intuitive and it's much easier for me to do. So I have like laminated signs at the top of my board that say common core standards, daily objective, agenda. So basically at the end of every day, I write my agenda up first before I even do my lesson plan. Because it's on my head, it's in my brain, it's like at the forefront of my mind. Like, oh well, you know, this writing class, we definitely need conferences tomorrow. Let me just write that up there tomorrow after our general conferences. Um, so then I fill out my lesson plan based on my agenda, and then I fill out my objective based on my agenda too. So um, I felt really corny writing that. But with this system, it's not hard to do. 
with my brand new coffee maker, I can make coffee in five minutes every morning, like a little product placement. But seriously, with this system that I have, it's extremely easy for me every single day to fill out my common core, my daily objective, and my agenda. Super, super easy. So I really, really like this system. Um, I also color code it, if you can see that. Um, I have the classes going across. So since I'm on the block, I only teach three classes. They're 90 minutes long. I teach English 2, I teach guided writing projects right now, and I'm the yearbook advisor. So English 2 is in red, guided writing is in blue, and then yearbook is in green. Um, if there are something that, if there's something that like, they're gonna be doing for a long time, sometimes I'll just type it up and print it out. So like, yearbook for example, we do the same thing all of the time, just with different um, pages in the yearbook. So like, one week they're working on a basketball spread, and the next week they're working on a homecoming spread, and then they're working on a bowling spread, or whatever. So I just keep my daily objective the same exact thing all the time, because it kind of is, even though we're all at different parts of the yearbook, if that makes any sense. A lot of you are probably like, I don't know anything about yearbook. That's fine. Um, anyway, posting the daily agenda and everything is super easy for me to do. Um, finally, you gotta have a way to archive your lesson plans because basically the way that I'm planning on using them is to go back the next time I'm teaching this class and look over my lesson plans. So I brought in my fancy little binder um, because I'm teaching English 2 up until Christmas and then I have a new class of English 2 starting in January. So what I do every day is once I'm done writing my lesson plan, I take it off the magnet of spot and I write a daily reflection. Um, so I have reflections written in at the end over here. This one, for example, says, they like discussion, but they get off topic easily. So I wrote that in there as my daily reflection. Then I put it in my binder. Then I take my binder, and I stick it in the back of my filing cabinet for that specific class. This says uh, Writer Studio, I guess. I was teaching Writer Studio for this. Um, I put it in the binder. I put it in the back. And these are all files like for that class. So everything is in its own cabinet. And it's super easy for me to access, like, next term or next year or whatever, next time I teach that class. Um, that's the way that I use them. You gotta have some kind of way to archive them though because you're going to want to see like, how did it go the last time I taught that lesson? I don't even remember. I barely even remember what story we're teaching. I should probably look at that. So I have it all there. Super easy for me to get. Um, I'm a fast talker and I'm also worried about being short on time. So <laughs> I'm gonna pause for a second. Are there any like successes that you guys have seen people doing their own lesson plan kind of organization thing that you want to share? Or maybe I put down here in smaller font, maybe if you're scared, any failures or frustrations that you've seen like a teacher do or maybe if you're student teaching or something, your co-op teacher does that you're like, that does not work out. I have a question. Yeah, Dr. Brett. When you um, identify that maybe students are getting off topic, yeah. do you also think ahead on how you might exactly. support that. In yeah, the next so like when I write my reflection, like for example, if it if the reflection said, oh, they are behind on their research paper, the next day I'm writing, we're doing conferences on my agenda, you know what I'm saying? So usually when I write my reflection, that's like a little note in my head to be like, next time we do a discussion, we're going to have to have guiding questions okay. or whatever. Um, that's the way that I use it. Because if you're just reflecting, sometimes if I'm really busy, I'm like, oh, so frustrating to reflect. But at least you're doing it a little bit. You're like, oh, they are really behind on that paper. We got to spend more time on that, or whatever. Uh, we can move on. I just wanted to see if anyone had anything else. <laughs> um, next is preparing daily materials. So you're going to want a way to like have all of your stuff organized when the class starts every single day. Because more likely than not, you have some kind of handout to give them, or some kind of worksheet, or some kind of quiz, or vocab, or whatever you're going to be giving them, you probably have something to hand out. Um, and you're going to want a way to organize it. How I do it, basically, is a way to like keep me on track if I totally blank out and I forget what I'm doing. So if I'm up there and I'm just like, I look at my agenda, oh, vocab, what does that mean? And I'm like, oh yeah, okay, I know. I go to my little tray. And I see the stack of papers, and I'm like, vocab quiz. And then I hand it out. I mean, I'm not that blank, but even if I was that blank, like, that's what I would do, you know? So it keeps me on track. It's super, like, intuitive. That's the way I like it. Um, my step one is to just get everything out in the open. This is my desk. My lesson plans are on the front of that. Um, 
This is what I use kind of during student teaching. I just hit change it up a little bit now that I have more space. Um, but basically, I get everything out in the open. Nothing is in filing cabinets. If we're using it that day, it's out in the open. Or it should be unless I forget or something. But it's out in the open, it's on my desk. It's visible so that I can see it and it's easy to reach. So I look over at my desk and I'm like, okay, vocab quiz, right? It's easy for me to reach and it's organized. Um, what I do is I have these two trays for each of my three classes. Um, the tray on top means that's what we're doing today with that class. The tray on the bottom is if I have any stuff that I printed out in advance. I'm like, we're, we're doing this on, on uh, you know, Tuesday with English 2. I'll just put that down. I'll get it printed out now and I'll just put it down there. Um, that way, even if we like run out of stuff, I have something ready. I'm like, we're going to do this tomorrow, but we're doing it today instead. I've got it printed out, right? Um, I do that for each of my classes. So like I said, if I'm teaching, I grab this big stack off my tray. I'm like, vocab okay, quiz, all right. Vocab okay, quiz, pass it out or whatever. It's all right there. Um, also right next to it, I have one of those handy dandy little like, it's a black thing that's metal and all the files go in the middle, you know what I'm talking about? Um, that's where I put all my files that I'm going to want to be reaching in some way soon. So what I do is for every single document that I create or that I have, I have a folder for it. So if it's a vocab quiz, I take it and I go uh, five vocab quiz because I do it like there's one, there's two, there's three, whatever week. Um, make a file for it, that file goes there until we're done with it, and then I put it back in the cabinet. Um, that's super handy for me. Some people organize it like by week, but I'm like, at any week it could be different from one term to the next. What if one week there's, it's freaking homecoming, oh, we're not getting that done that week, you know, or whatever, or it's Thanksgiving, we only have two days in the whole week, you know, or whatever. The weeks change for me. Um, the units, though, I know what I want in my unit, so I have all those folders in there. Um, just get used to your system so that every single time you have a piece of paper, you know, I gotta put it in a folder, I gotta put it in my cabinet. There's a picture in my cabinet. <laughs> this is how I store it. I just have two nice big filing cabinets, and when I open up the drawer, they're all like that. All of the folders are just like that. Um, I say store it for future or maybe not so future use, because you know, most of the time, like, it's the end of the term right now, so everyone cares about their grades. So all the students are like, I'm failing in here. I'm like, I know. We've talked about it multiple times. Give me my late work. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> you go back in your file and you're like, you're missing this, you're missing this, you're missing this, and it's all right there. Um, this is my suggested step three. I have this handy dandy cart in the middle of my room that I really, really like. Um, basically, it's like a lot of teachers have some kind of media cart, very similar to this, where you've got a computer. And sometimes, like, the way I had it student teaching and everything was the projector was on it, and it was like facing the projector screen, you know what I'm saying? Opposite that, I have a desk with like, my textbook is open on it. Um, our textbook is huge because I have the teacher's edition and the student edition is already huge so the, the teacher's is even bigger. It's like more than 10 pounds easy. So I just keep it open on my desk, open to the page that we're reading or that we're gonna be reading. It's super handy. I don't have to like lug that thing around anywhere. Um, I also, when I have all my daily papers that I grab off the tray, sometimes I'll just put them on the desk and that way, because I usually teach from the front, right? So I can go and grab any of my papers that are on that desk. Um, super handy for me. Don't know if that would work for you, again, but I like this double-sided cart thing. Works for me. I keep my independent novel, it's right there because I read when the kids are reading. Um, I keep referrals right there, that's where I take attendance, whatever. Anything that we're working on, I just put right there. Any successes you want to share with this one like have you seen things go very awry in the other end <laughs> in the feelings of frustrations have you seen like teachers totally lose worksheets or anything like that <laughs> yeah some of you have yeah i'm at davenport west right now too oh. um, who are you with i'm with mr kinty ah mr kinty okay <laughs> um but we have to share rooms so do you have any advice oh. on how to i if i were a teacher on a cart that cart would be decked to the nines with folders everywhere and magnets, I swear to God, because teaching on a cart has gotta be so stressful. I have not had to do it, but I've seen it a lot. Like when I was at West, there's like three or four teachers that are on carts. Yeah, Central, there's a number of teachers that are on carts. You guys know what I mean when I say that? Basically, a teacher doesn't have their own room. So like, if you're a new teacher, it's likely that you get that. You don't have your own room, so first block you teach in this room, then second block you teach in that room, then third block you, you know, whatever. Luckily, I don't have that because I took on the yearbook, so I get my own room with computers in it. It's really nice. Um, but yeah, like the other new teachers at Central this year, some of them are teachers on carts. 
if I were a teacher on a cart, I would have like trays everywhere and magneted everything. Um, Cause a cart is, is metal. So <laughs> I would just magnet everything to it. Um, but I can imagine that that would be super, super stressful. Do you have any like successes that you've seen people doing? Um, I am like the six bag lady, so I have like just oh yeah, I know people that are bag stuff, teachers, but stuff. um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm trying to find something a little lighter. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I was gonna just say because I've seen teachers do it without a cart, and I'm like, I would not be able to do it without a cart. I would have my cart up everywhere, like I'd be rolling through the hallways with that thing, because I need that like space to have all of my stuff organized in piles or whatever. That's just me. Um, anything else you guys have on this? Um. Sorry, I share. A, I, I teach out by Chicago, but I do share a room right now, and I would suggest if you can have a sit down with the teacher and say, "This is what I would like to do. This is this is my X, Y, and Z of what I would like to do. How can we make that happen?" Yes, and so. you know, like whether it be yeah, we draw a line down the desk, or is there some way we can get another table in here? Is there you know just be like if you have your specific objectives and your specific goals, and and they realize you're a student teacher. You know, like it's not for the whole year. Yeah. It's just for while I'm here, can we please make this happen? And say it as a we. Like it's I'm not just putting this all on you, but I you know, I'm I'm trying to get my foot in here and, and make it my own. That's definitely a good thing to do. If, but go in with exactly what you want to do so he knows you're it's not like a, oh well I'm thinking maybe I'll do this and then tomorrow I change my mind. When I was with Miss I was with Mrs. Staber when I was at West oh, no. and I had like a little baby desk. And instead of my trays being spread out, I had them stacked to the nines. I had like eight trays. One time I kidnapped them over. I was like, oh my god. I'm sorry! I was like, yeah, you're sorry. Look at all this. Look at this mess. I'm sorry. Pick that up. Oh, I had, I, I seriously had, I think, eight trays. So I had a lot of trays on a little tiny desk, but the tray thing works for me. Mrs. Saber doesn't do trays. She just like has them on a table. Whereas I'm like, I need the trays, like I need the trays and I need the little metal prongy thing that separates it out. Mm -hmm. um, the prongy thing I stole from her, she does the prongy thing. Alright, um, finally I put on here like students being able to access materials. Um, you're going to want to organize your room or your cart in some way so that you have system in, systems in place so students don't have to bother you with questions they could easily answer themselves. That's like my biggest pet peeve when I'm in the middle of teaching, or like we're talking, and the kid in the back is like, Miss Hammer! I'm like, yeah, uh, can I have a pencil? I'm like, you know where the pencils are. They're right by the front door. They're right when you walk in, their pencils are there. Just go get one. Like, And I go through this at the beginning of the year, but they still forget, or whatever, or I don't have paper. And I have to get them the paper. The paper is right here. So that's my biggest pet peeve, or one of them, is when they're like, can, can I have this, can I have that, when I, they know I have it there for them. Because um, I have to have these materials ready for them, otherwise it would be me going in my own personal desk drawer and getting paper or getting a folder or getting a pencil or whatever all of the time. So I try to make it like basically as automated as possible. Um, what I do with turning papers in is I just have one basket. Some people need more baskets. Two baskets? A trillion baskets? It depends. If you want like a basket per class, you know, sometimes that'll work for you. Maybe you need a basket per, like if you have a couple assignments coming in on one day. Maybe you need a basket per assignment. I just do one basket. It works pretty well for me. Um, I have a desk like at the front of my room. Those are my seating charts right above it. I have a, a desk with a basket. And that basket can stay there or it can go anywhere around the room. So they know it's there. At other times I put the stapler in it, like if we're passing in journals, I'm like, here you go, pass it around. Where's the basket? Where's the basket? I'm like, just look, it's right over there. Oh, okay. They know that when they're turning stuff in, it goes to the basket. I even brought the basket with me up to the library the other day when we were doing research. Like, here's my vocab from like three weeks ago. I'm like, put it in the basket. Oh, yeah. Just put it in the basket. Um, from there, I have like a box on my desk where I put all the stuff that I have to grade. And once a day, pretty much, I organize both my basket and my box. So usually it'll be like, at the end of the day, I'll just take my basket and turn it upside down and I'll go through it and I'll be like, well, all of these are the worksheets from second block, and then these are the vocab quizzes from third block, binder clip them together. And then, okay, these people turn them in early, so I'm just going to leave them in the basket and not stress about them. Then I put everything that I need to grade, binder clipped, in my box. I don't even have a real box. All I ever do is, you know when you buy a bunch of file folders? I go through a lot of file folders. You know how you have those, like, it's a box in the bottom and a box in the top with the lid? I just keep all those. So now I have, like, ten or more of those. And those are my boxes for everything. So that box is on my desk. 
everything I need to grade goes in there. Um, that's super helpful for me. One box, one basket is enough for me. Some teachers need more, that's enough for me. Um, this is something I highly recommend if you can do it. Not a lot of people can do it. When I inherited my room, it used to be inhabited by a woman who worked at that school for like 20 plus years, and she was the newspaper advisor. These things were just sitting in my room when I came there. And basically they're like, you know, if you've ever worked on a newspaper staff, sometimes they'll have these mailboxes for you and they'll put your or assignments in there. These are just sitting in there and I was like, I'm using those. So I have them in one corner of my room. At the beginning of every term, I have the kids write with masking tape their name. They personally go and find a mailbox that they want. Um, this is how I give papers back and it saves me a ton of time. When I student taught, like, during announcements usually would be my paper passing time. They'd be running around passing back papers or whatever. Oh, I just don't like it because it clutters up my desk and I'm like, what's this? Do I have to grade it? No, it's already graded. What's this? No, I'm using that tomorrow. Okay, this is what I have to give back. It's too much for me. I like this because then when I want like a, a no brain activity, I'm like, I graded these papers. I'm going to go put them in their boxes. And then I just put them in their boxes. It like takes no thinking. It makes me relaxed. Um, and they know that these are their boxes. They know where their box is, they know that their papers are in there. Um, it also takes the blame out of my hands because they know how organized I am. So I hate it when they were like, Miss Amber, you lost something of mine. I'm like, I lost something of yours? Well, I don't have it. I'm like, you really think I lost it? No. I'm like, did you check in your box? Okay, let me look at my box and then if it's not in there, okay, uh, uh, maybe I didn't put my name on it. Yes. This is really ne sadly necessary for high schoolers. No name wall of shame. All these people did not put their name on them. I'm like, I'm not trying to figure it out, especially if it's at the beginning of the term. Because if I'm on a block schedule, I got four terms in a year. So if it's like the beginning of the term, I don't know their handwriting just yet. Usually I can tell if it's a boy or a girl, that's about it. Um, until like a couple more weeks in, I'll be like, oh, this is Alyssa, this is Mystique's. And I still put it up there, because what if it's not theirs? You know, I put it up there and I'm like, Alyssa, a question mark? Um, and if it's missing in the grade book, they know that I turned that in. Oh, I didn't put my name on it though, and they know it's there. Um, but I like it that it takes the blame out of my hands, because that is one another of my biggest pet peeves. You lost my paper. No, I did not. If it's not in my basket, if it's not in the box on my desk, it's in your box, or it's on the wall. And they're like, mm -hmm, they go find it. And I'm like, that's right, because you know how how organized I am. <laughs> pet peeve of mine. Okay. Um, like I said before, I automate as much as possible. So I do that with like worksheets and anything that they're gonna need to. Up here at the top, this is on top of my no name wall chain. Um, look at all this metal, metal shelves, metal filing hanging over here. Okay, I got a box that I just made green. I make everything like a color so that they remember where it is. So for example, we do a journal every day. It is so stressful because there are a number of kids that could be missing at any time, any day, right? So if they're gone, they know they have to make up a journal. I just put, print out a bunch at the beginning of the year or throughout the year, and I pop them in there. Miss Amber, I was gone the other day. Can you give me a journal? I'm like, go to the green box. They're like, oh yeah, it's right there. Um, I have another one of those little prongy separating things, and I have other things that they are going to need all the time in there. So for example, we do reading logs every day, and there's a little prompt for them to like say what they're going to be writing. Because it's not a summary of their reading, but it's a reflection. A lot of them don't really get that. So I have little prompts up there that are like, to prompt you to start reflecting about your reading. So if they need that, it's right there. Anything that we're gonna be using all of the time is right up there, and they know that. Um, down here, I have like my bookshelf where um, all of my supplies are gonna be. So here, right by the freaking door are where the pencils are. We got scissors, we got stapler, um, construction paper, loose leaf paper, glue, markers, magazines, all that stuff is down there. Um, and they know that. They know if they need a pencil, I should know. If they need a pencil, just go grab it. Or if they need to staple something, it's right there. Or if hand sanitizer, right there. Um, that's handy for me, because that's a big pet peeve of mine to go and have to grab loosely. This is, this is the final slide. I'm, not, I'm good on time. Anything you guys want to share about really like disastrous things? Andrea, um, or good things? Well, what my co-op does when he wants to pass back papers, he also doesn't lose them very well, so he always it makes the student like blend themselves. Yeah. So he has period, like, section areas um, where they, he kind of just throws all the graded paper uh, and then he gives myself. the students rows like your row Monday and you're going to pass back all the papers on Monday and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, things like that. Um, but now at this point of the year it's totally flopped 
and now that's my responsibility. So I told him, if you're not going to pass back the papers, I'm just going to recycle it all. If yeah. you have a missing work in the, you know, the book, it's, it's going to be gone. Yeah. So that's your fault. That's good, though. I like that because then the teacher doesn't even have to do it. The yeah. students yeah. can do it. Yep. Whatever. That's nice. Um, with those boxes I, I had or whatever, a lot of you guys won't just have those when you go into your room. <laughs> but I was like, you know, you could easily make them or you could rig them in some way to have that set up. I love the boxes. Um, but yeah, I've seen that too, where students are paper passers or whatever. That's a big, that was a big annoyance of, to me when I was student teaching, was having to go through, and oh, Jimmy's not here today, okay, I gotta get back to him later, and I have a big pile of kids that were not there, or whatever. Um, my biggest failure is missing work. I've tried a number of different things to, like, automate getting them their missing work when a kid is absent or whatever. Oh, what did we do the other day? I need to get it. But nothing has really worked so far. I had a box, but I would always forget to put the stuff that was in the box. And I can't really have them get it because then they'd be in my final cabinet all the time, you know? Um, and it's not like I can just say problems 1 through 10 in the book because we don't really do that. I have a worksheet that I give them or I have a PowerPoint that they're responding to or, you know, whatever. So it would include a lot of me printing stuff out and trying to fit it in a binder and three-hole punching it. And then when they didn't get it, okay, put it in my filing cabinet, but then they want it later. I haven't found a good way to automate that yet. That's my biggest failure is getting missing work organized. Right now what they have to do is if they're missing, it's in the book, it's missing, they know that. And they're like, hey, it says I'm missing uh, you know, uh, questions from the Hemingway story. And I'm like, oh, I don't know what that is. And then I give it to them. So that's what I do right now, but I need to find a better way to automate that. Any other questions or comments before I finish up? This is my last slide. It's really, really dark. But my school is really, really old. And out in front of my classroom is a random fireplace. I was like, okay, I'm gonna hang some stockings up. So <laughs> right now there are a bunch more stockings because finally this class I got them to do their of mice and men stockings. But right, so I made a bunch of beautiful stockings and I made this. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care. And just yesterday a teacher walked by who's been in that building for like years, and she was like, oh, because it's a real fireplace. I was like, yes, it's a women. What are you doing? <laughs> do with that fireplace right next that's my my door to my room is right here so it's like literally right by my room I was like we gotta do something with this for Christmas so that's what I did uh any other questions before I hand it over okay let me get my flashlight out of here guard your eyes